Hello everyone and welcome to our Screaming Frog demo video. This is just a quick walkthrough of the tool to explain a little bit more about what it does and some of its features and benefits. Now while I'm talking I'm actually going to call our Screaming Frog website that I've just input in this top URL bar here and I'll click start and you can see data immediately starts being populated in this main window pane here. So the SEO Spider is a desktop tool that you can download and install on Windows, Mac OS or Linux. And it analyzes websites for common SEO issues. It helps identify issues at scale and collect data you need to make informed SEO decisions. So it's a free tool, first of all, for calling up to 500 URLs at a time. But if you'd like to crawl more than that or have access to the configuration, to save crawls, or some of the more advanced features, then you can buy a license for £149 a year per user, and a user is a person. Now, the tool itself is built for SEO professionals who know what they're doing, but it can be used by beginners or those without much knowledge by following our user guide and reading various guides out there about SEO across the web. Now you can see that the crawl has already started. At the top, you can see the crawl percentage is at 40%. You can see the average and current number of URLs being called a second in the middle at the bottom here, and the number of URLs completed and remaining left to go. And you can see the kind of data that's being pulled in this top window pane here. And all the data is populated in real time. You can scroll down to see the URLs that are being called now. And you can also scroll over to the right here to see the types of data that's being pulled against URLs. So not just URLs, but status codes, indexability, whether URLs are indexable or non-indexable, page titles, meta descriptions, headings, meta robots, canonicals, pagination, things like word count, call depth, in links, out links, and lots of different data points that will be useful for, to make SEO decisions, essentially. Now, we also organize data via the tabs at the top here that also have respective filters around type or issues. So, for example, we're on the internal tab, which includes all the URLs that are internal on the website. So that's the subdomain that we're calling. It's classed as internal. And this has various filters around different types. So you can filter by HTML pages or JavaScript or CSS. But if I click on a more specific uh, tab around an element such as security, these will be around issues such as mixed content or missing HSTS header or perhaps page titles. I can see missing page titles, duplicates, particularly long or short page titles that I may wish to optimize. Now, this right hand window pane here also follows the same format of tabs and filters, and this updates and populates in real time. So you don't need to click into the tabs and filters to, to view the data. You'll know whether it exists by just scrolling through. So for example, I can see there's one URL with mixed content, or I can see actually there's zero URLs that are missing page titles, which is good news. Um, and this low window pane also populates with more data as well when you move around and click different URLs. So I can view uh, the URL details, of this particular URL, I can view in links, so all the pages on the website linked to this particular page, the anchor text, whether the links are followed or no followed, the path type, so whether they're absolute or relative URLs, and the link position of those links, so whether in the header, navigation, or content, or footer, and so on. The outlinks, image details, so you can look at any images on the page and their alt text, and whether they're missing alt text, you can also get a an image preview and there's various other tabs down here things like the SERP snippet preview to show you how a page may look in the Google search results v things like structured data so I can view structured data on the page and whether it's triggered a Google rich result feature and now some of these will be uh, blank and empty because they haven't been configured I haven't configured to pull in page speed details or spelling and grammar errors for example but you can configure to pull in all those details via the configuration, which I'll go into more detail in just a moment. Now you can export all this data. You can just click the export button up here, which will export this top window pane. And it also works alongside the tabs and the filters. And you can also export the lower window pane here as well. 
So I recommend going through the tabs and exploring the different data points. You can have a look at things like external URLs, security errors, response codes. So you can find any, any pages that are blocked by robots.txt or not responding, a redirects, client errors. So that's things like broken links or server errors, URL issues, page titles, meta descriptions, H1s, H2s, content. So you can think things like duplicate content and near duplicate content. I can see I have a near duplicate page here. There's a closest similarity match. So another page on the website has a 92% match to the SEO Spider license page and it's the log file analyzer page here. And if I go down and click on duplicate details, I can click on the near duplicate address and then see a content preview of those. And I can see what's changed in the content. I can just see here that actually it's just the name SEO Spider license, log file analyzer license are the main differences and the price uh, and a menu link here. So that's really handy, but there's various other filters that you can see under content as well. You can look at images and whether any are missing alt text. So these are all the images missing alt text. I can then click on image details and see what pages these are on and go and update those to include alt text. Canonical, so can canonical uh, common issues with canonicals, whether they're canonicalized or missing, or whether there's multiple on a page, pagination, directives, so things like no index or no follow can be seen there. Internationalization, so hreflang on pages, any accelerated mobile page issues that it may find, it will validate those. Structured data again, it will perform validation there for any Google search features, but also schema.org issues as well. And there's various other tabs that I recommend exploring. Now, the SEO Spider is highly configurable. You can go to configuration and see all the different options that are here. And I'll just touch upon some of them because there's, there's too many to run through really in this demo video. You can hover over them and it will explain what they mean. So you can choose whether to call images or CSS. There's uh, various options around crawl behavior, whether you want to crawl subdomains or whether you want to full, uh, follow internal no follow or not, or crawl XML sitemaps. You can choose whether to extract certain details from pages or not. There's various limits you can place on crawling. You can also render web pages within our inbuilt headless Chrome browser. So this is useful for crawling websites that rely upon client side JavaScript. So for example, websites that are JavaScript frameworks, things like sparse, so single page applications and things like that. You can actually render the web page and crawl the rendered HTML like a modern search bot does, like Googlebot does today. And you can choose the window size, whether it's emulating a smartphone or whether it's desktop and so on. There's also some other options, advanced options here that you can adjust and preferences. So it's really customizable to get the data that you need in the de in the, and crawl in the way that you expect and the way that you want. Some other more common ones are things like robots.txt. You can choose to ignore those or you can test robots.txt within the tool. You could choose whether to crawl certain types of URL patterns or exclude them. You can adjust the speed. You could switch user agent or customize the HTTP header. There's more advanced features like custom search. So you can choose to find certain text on web pages. Perhaps that would be a Google Analytics tracking code, perhaps a GTM a container tag you could input here and choose to find them within the HTML head of the website or flag it if any pages do not contain them. If there's any data that isn't pulled in by default, you can also use custom extraction. For example, I may wish to collect H3s from across the website. I can do so using XPath. But it may also be useful, for example, if you're performing a content audit and let's say you want to extract the author name from web pages or the published date or the number of comments, you can do all those types of things using custom extraction, which we have a guide upon. It's really simple to use. Um, you can also connect to various APIs for Google Analytics, Search Console, PageSpeed Insights and external link providers like Majestic, Ahrefs and Moz. So it's really simple. You can just connect your Google account like so, connect to it and pull in and choose your uh, particular account property view and segment, date range, 
and metrics that you want so things like sessions or goals or conversion so transactions and revenue and things like that and you can pull that data in against crawl data which can be really useful when analyzing performance and you can do the same for for a google search console and, and other apis as well there's various other configuration options that are worth touching upon authentication so you can log into websites so if there's a staging environment or perhaps you just need to log into a particular area to crawl it you can do so using forms based authentication um, you can also change the way data is stored so by default it's stored in memory but you can also choose to store all data to disk if you have an ssd in a database that's particularly useful for crawling particularly large websites and you can also obviously save crawls and all this data so you can come back to it at a later stage there's various other options under file as well so you can also schedule crawls for example so you can set up scheduling to crawl a particular website every week in a particular way and export to a particular location for example you can save configuration and reload it back in you can also switch the mode of the spider so you don't have to just crawl a website you can upload a list of urls by switching to list mode or an xml sitemap for example you can also bulk export data so if you wanted to bulk export all in links to say broken links so here are all the broken links found on the website well some of them are 403 so we're looking specifically at 404s so here's a broken link i can view the in links to that and if I scroll over to the left, I can see that it's the, our 2018 A Year in review, review page that links to this particular post on the Brighton SEO website with this anchor text. And I actually want to know all of these pages, so all of the from source pages. If you want to export those in bulk, you can just go to bulk export, go down to response codes and click on client error for XX in links. And that will give you a spreadsheet of all of those in. So you can go and fix those up. There's also various reports you can create site maps and image site maps. There's some very cool visualizations such as a cool uh, tree graph that you can zoom in and out of. That's pretty cool. There's force directed diagrams as well for cool diagrams and directory tree diagrams. I won't explain what each of these are now, but we do have plenty of guides on the website to explain that. You can right click on those and zoom in. You can go back and you can change various scaling options on those. If you want to scale them by unique in links or change the colors of the nodes and all types of things as well. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good overview of the tool. I recommend downloading the free version and giving, giving it a go and just exploring the various options and tabs and filters that contain to give you a good understanding of the types of data that can be pulled in. Obviously, if you have any questions, just let our support team know and we're, we'll reply really quickly. You can also follow me. My name's Dan. I'm one of the founders at Screaming Frog. You can follow me on Twitter at Screaming Frog. If you have any questions, you can also tweet me there as well. So we hope you like the tool and thanks for your time.